And welcome to Let's Keep Chatting. I'm Lisa and this is Elric and we're from the Five Centre of Qualities. Uh, today we're chatting with Sarah from Shield. So, hi Sarah. Good to see Hello. you. Thank Hello, thank you for having me. Hello. The internet is holding up, so it's great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no cutting out for me today. Um, the podcast has been about community groups or organisations from around five and we chat about what they're doing to help people from different equality groups and who and who are dealing with uh, poverty and how they're coping with a uh, COVID-19 situation. But we're also doing a video of this which uh, kind of works sometimes but uh, that helps people to actually put uh, subtitles or closed captions on YouTube uh, but if not just Listen to a podcast, that's the best way, really. Perfect. Um, so, welcome to the final episode of Let's Keep Chatting uh, of Series 2, Sarah. <laughs> um, we first met you back in September for Diversity Week. Yes. And also, happy belated birthday because of it was the group's birthday last week, their first birthday. Um, so how have you been uh, coping, you know? We've been, we've been coping really, really well. And I feel them as the months go on, um, we're gaining our own sort of confidence and coming away from that imposter syndrome that we felt very early on. Because we were new to third sector and we'd never worked in a community organisation or any sort of charitable cause, at times it uh, maybe, believe it or not, slowed us down <laughs> um, because we were maybe a wee bit worried or didn't believe. Not, not that we didn't have the belief, but we, we maybe felt that um, we weren't qualified enough to challenge certain problems within the community or we weren't educated enough to know what other um, sectors were, were challenging the problems that we felt were present within Fife. Um, but we definitely have um, grown with the group and um, got a lot of sort of confidence in the work that we do. Not overconfident, you know, we're always challenging ourselves on what we could be doing better and, and how we could be doing it. But no, it's, it's since we last spoke in September, um, no, it's been good. We've had Christmas, which was a huge event for us and challenging, and we came through it. Um, we have reflected on what we'd maybe do different for next year, and now we're looking forward to um, launching our own food waste charity, which we're aiming for June. So, and we've also formed officially wow. as a community interest company. So, there's been a lot of things going on in um, such a short space of time. Um, so yeah, we're 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 getting there, and proud of uh, proud of ourselves. And for somebody like me to say that I'm proud of myself is quite rare because I don't really tend to give myself self praise. I'm all about self praise for other people, um, but I'm learning the art of um, being kind to myself and you know giving myself praise, um, which I think um, then allows me to sort of not be um, a fraud because if I'm encouraging others to do these things and if I'm not practicing it, it, it holds no value. So I've really had to self-teach myself those qualities. Fair is fair. Yeah, you have to be fair. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Externally, internally. But there's a lot that you said there. Can you tell a bit more about this? You, you said there's of a... Uh, so there's a food recycling uh, charity and there's, there's also uh, setting yourself as a CIC, yes. so CIC, so, uh, so people don't know what it is yet. So yeah, I'll bit. explain. So CIC format um, doesn't tend to be a um, format that a lot of community groups would choose. And this is because it restricts your funding. That's the fundamental part of it. You will struggle to get any funding for a CIC. Now, a community interest company format, um, I believe, is better for SHIELD. And this is because there's always going to be a category of people who will never come forward if you're under charitable status because some people don't like to come to charities, some people don't like to feel a charitable cause, and some people want to be able to um, feel that they've got someone that they can come forward and still regain their integrity and not feel that it, they have to be embarrassed to use a service. So. Whilst I knew it was going to be a sacrifice that we wouldn't be able to get the funding, I knew that sacrifice had to be made for the general public to have a service that they could come to without that fear. Um, so, community interest company, they're asset locked. So, the fundamental you know, format is it is, is a company. However, because it's asset locked, nobody can self gain, there is no self benefit. 
Um, all profits have to be reinvested back into local community causes. You have to pay the same tax. There's no tax relief. There, there is nothing. But it means that we really have to work hard for our money. Um, which makes us have to stay on our toes. We're going to have to be very motivated. We're going to have to be forward thinking. We're going to have to um, have, you know, quite good visionary um, and use our skill sets to draw that money and to be able to support the work that we do. And it also allows us to be self-reliant. Um, you know, we could have gone as a charitable status and we probably would have got thousands and thousands of pounds thrown at us. However, with that comes an air of responsibility and commitment that um, people then expect. And if we can't secure that fund in the following year, that means that we maybe have to deprive somebody of a, a paid role that we've you know, mm -hmm. um, applied for yeah. funding to put them in. And then um, we're all about organic growth. And if we were given too much too soon, I generally believe there would be a crash and burn aspect of us. Um, so because it had been such a busy, you know, fast paced year I didn't want another year like that you know it devoted a lot of my personal space and time it's um, taken a lot of the volunteers a um, big chunk out of their space and time as well mm -hmm. and I, I really wanted to pilot some concepts and ideas and make sure that we were one able to do the work that we were doing and two, that we had the right people with the right level of commitment because there's a huge in my personal point of view and this is just mine it doesn't make me right and it doesn't make me wrong a lot of people we were at risk of maybe self-gain on the wrong types of people having the wrong types of motiva motivation for wanting to be involved with shield so we had to protect the group mm -hmm. so as it stands at the moment still no wages that's okay that's fine we have the benefit that we can also subscribe to the group to benefit from food and um, we're now able to take basic things like diesel but we're not able to take um like mileage but that, that's okay um we are um launching our own um oap cafe so this oh, is going to wow. generate i know it's, i'm real this is what i'm really excited about so um we will be launching this OAP cafe. It's going to be similar to Social Bite, but it's going to be for OAPs. And um, we'll have a takeaway for the general public to use and they can pay it forward. Our CIC will also um, make up the shortfall of any monies that we need to support the OAPs. Um, it's based in the co-op down in Resyth. They have donated a unit to us. It's a double unit. We've applied for a change of purpose. And what we aim to do is create a safe, um, private space out with a care setting environment for OAPs who maybe don't want to go to daycare or maybe don't want to go to like a stereotypical place to come along, get a coffee, get an atter, you know, get a sandwich, get stovey soup, basic things. We'll do their shopping for them in the co-op while they sit and enjoy a free sit down meal. Um, and um, we're going to decorate it of a generation of their time that, that evokes those memories from their childhood uh -huh. and um, almost like a memory box cafe. Yeah, memory box cafe, yeah. yeah. Wow. And <laughs> as COVID um, restrictions left, what we would aim to do is invite small groups in. It could be small numbers of up to 10, and we'll host dominoes nights, card evenings, um, music, putting on old film, um, just to get them back into socialisation because the individuals that have been at home have actually been deprived the most with social contact. Mm -hmm. um, the ones in a care home environment, whilst it's been extremely hard for them, they have had some form of socialisation. And we're very passionate about the OAP population that to us, they're the last generation of the least self-entitled people you'll ever meet. They are self-sufficient. They um, never were brought up in an environment of having a benefit system or being able to um, apply for tax credits. They are very robust and they are actually a difficult, um, a, a different generation to try and, and help because they are not used to it. So we want to pay that back and it's an honour to be able to just create a, a, an environment for them to come along and we le learn from them. You know, we can learn a lot from, from our OAP generation and any um, profits, you know, that say we have extra money that you know so many meals have been paid for these will be used to then reach out to other oap organizations in the area and um, that we could maybe then say to i don't know say it was um 
a care home in Dunfermline or Glenrothes, we could say, we've got a budget here. We'd like to donate this money to you to maybe take them out for the day or get some form of entertainment in for the afternoon. So then we can outreach into other areas that we, we can't gain access to on behalf so, of the So when you say OAP, it's like, uh, it's like people 65 plus, or like you're talking like the the great generation, the people that were just before the Second World War. So I think that's how they called the, the greatest generation or something like that. I can't remember. Or someone yeah. was mentioning that. So, so what, what age are you, you talking we, we about? Would, um, we would class any OAP, so um, retirement age. Um, any retirement age. Okay. Yeah, retirement age. So we would encourage those individuals or even in, individuals that have got early dementia before that um, age category um, because in that, in that safe space, they can come along with their carer or their loved one. Um, they can come with a family member just to have some private time, you know, away. So everybody's welcome. It's just that for the sit, for actually sitting down, we're, we're hoping it will be OAPs either on their own or with, with a family member that just wants to come along, um, enjoy some company, have some free food. And um, if there was another um, mutation of COVID, us having the takeaway allows us to still be able to produce the food and physically take it home to them because we've then um, built up a different sort of captured audience that we maybe never knew about through SHIELD. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a win-win situation um, and I'm really I'm hopeful for it. Um, and we're hoping the money that we fundraise through the CIC and the takeaway will then fund the reality of being able to pull it together and make it a sit down cafe. So no, it, it's it's exciting. And it oh, means man. then Angela, who's been doing the cooking, she can go and work in there full time and we can give her a wage. You know, hey. I thought you were about we <laughs> <laughs> Angela is for keeping a uh, one hundred percent so and so it's just nice. It's going to create job opportunities, exactly. you know, and because we've linked in with the college, it means we can maybe then say to the, the college, you know, we've got a job post here, you know, a few hours a week, maybe get two or three different people in to give them more about the work experience and the actual money. Because this year they've been deprived of stereotypical student jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's not, about, it's not about the monetary value of that. It's the work experience. You know, you've got educated people that have not been able to get work experience and it's it's tragic. Yeah, it's the after ripple effect of, of everything. Definitely yeah. the time to rebuild as well. We need to think about, okay, how do we recover from this? And it's time yeah. to, to put that in place everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My, my daughter's one of those students that's been deprived of work experience this year because of what's going on, you know, and it's all getting pushed back now for our final year after August. But, you know, it's a great idea that you've got this connection with Fife College and, you know, in some way helping each other kind of thing at the same time. So I really want to push that relationship with the college because um, it's been limited, the support that we can offer the students because they're not physically on campus. Mm -hmm. But as time moves on, We'll be able to run projects. We'll be able to have, um, like, put a budget aside for certain specific target areas that are important to Shield and incorporate their skills as well to help. You know, for you know, like, I'm not any good at certain. You know, I couldn't website build. I'm not very good at market, and I'm not very good at. But my my strengths are that I recognise Shield's weaknesses, and we can fill them. And because we've got such a good community support support. Um, everything just seems to magnetise and materialise. And I do believe that it, it is because at the forefront of it is we just want to help, but that's it. You know, if we can all help one another, it's a ripple effect. But yourselves, you, I mean, if you think about it from being uh, people that knew each other like a year ago to becoming like part of a movement, part of a, of, a, of a group that come together as volunteers and now you're evolving yourselves, like like every single one from Shield yourself and all of your volunteers that, that have been involved, you've developed a lot over the space of, of a year as well. So that's part of like it's crazy. how do we rebuild, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And I've watched even the volunteers evolve, you know, and from a personal level, I've watched um, them, you know, Shield has been a lifeline, not just to the general public, but to us 
personally in our, in our own lives, like I have evolved at a rate that I could never of, there was a lot of issues. I mean, I'm getting a bit personal here, but I don't mind getting personal and transparent. Like if it wasn't for SHIELD, there's a lot of qualities within myself that I would never have known it had existed. Mm. And it's, it's been, um, so whilst SHIELD has helped so many people, it's helped me on such a personal level evolve as a person that no amount of um, sort of counselling or um, self-development could have ever produced in such mm -hmm. a short space of time. And it's the same with the volunteers. I've watched their skills develop, I've watched their confidence grow, I've watched them, um, you know, it's, it's been, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but it, it's been it's been beautiful. You know, I feel really lucky that as a team, SHIELD hasn't just evolved, but as a volunteer group, we've evolved. Yeah, I, I've, I've been like watching your Facebook page and I've noticed that some of your volunteers have like left, they've continued on helping the community, you know, mm -hmm. and you've still got that sort of, you know, teamwork between each other, but it's good to see that a, a group that started a year ago and you didn't have any uh, idea how to work in the third sector and then now to have volunteers no, expanding no. and doing their own thing. And it's really and what's good amazing is, well, I mean, this time last year, I was totally running it from the house. I'd literally moved back to Fife. I'd been away for a decade. I didn't know anybody really because I'd lost connection with a lot of people. But I would say the volunteers, the ratio of volunteers that we've now got, there's only one that's been a connection from my past, which is Emma. Emma and I actually went to high school together, but we were never in a friend group. Um, we were a separate friend group. But the rest of our volunteers are all individuals that I never had a, a connection with. So it speaks volumes that these wow. strangers have stayed into the group. Um, mm -hmm. Bonded and connected, and I mean, we have, we have. How many, sorry, Emma's here. How many volunteers would you say we've got total when you add in all our about forty? Wow, that's big. Yeah. No, we've got three it's four volunteers. Yeah, we've got um, Angela and Emma and myself still in here because of COVID. We can't introduce other people into this small space, and it mm -hmm. is tiring at times, and it is exhausting. Um, we all seem to, there's been no fallouts, there's been no, no I'm just, <laughs> there's been, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a, really easy, like really easy. It just, it just seems to all, so yeah, no, I'm extremely proud and without all the other volunteers, I mean, collecting all that surplus seven nights a week, that's huge it's a lot and we've got individuals that we know have vans so we can pick up the phone and say listen we've been offered such and such would you mind coming along with your van and, and you know people are happy to do it it's great that's, we're, we're it, very lucky but it's it's an amazing story of trans in some ways it's it's uh it's transformed your view as well of uh the local community in fact as well because you, your experience has completely changed from what as you say you move back after 10 years you're like okay where do I pick it up from? But this is completely different. <laughs> it's crazy. It had, yeah. I, had I known just how big, um, I'm very, very passionate about helping everybody. I, there's there's no denying that, but one key thing that I have noticed and the volunteers have noticed throughout all of this, there isn't a lot of support for the work in poverty and there isn't a lot of support for students that are in between studies because they maybe have to wait before they can qualify for certain benefits and there's no sort of support there for them. And I mean, we help OAPs, we help homeless, we help unemployed people, but we are really passionate about the work in poverty. And it is, it's something that, um, you know, we feel if there, if there wasn't a need there, we, we wouldn't need to be here. And mm -hmm. I could walk away from SHIELD tomorrow. Um, although I'm passionate about the work that we do, I'm not emotionally attached. I, I would be able to walk away if there wasn't a need for us. I'd be so bloody proud of what we've done and what we've achieved and almost delighted that we weren't needed because it'd be a sign to me that society and systems and um, our communities are thriving, mm -hmm. but we're not. We're still here because there's a need. But and it doesn't um, consume me or worry me, but I would love to see us maybe being better recognised and financially supported that the work in poverty and students do need a service 
that enables mm -hmm. them to, to come forward. Um, but we'll see, time will tell, you know, it is what it is and we just focus on what we're doing and we make best of what money we do have. And um, we, we seem to, you know, for example, um, we got donated coffee. I don't know if you've seen this oh, yeah. story. <laughs> Bags of it. So, you would have that would have been your that's heaven. Sounds, that's <laughs> my so, there was these coffee beans and anybody else would have probably been like, No, I'm not taking them because they would just sit there and stereotypically not a lot of people would have a grinder at home or they maybe don't drink felt you know, um coffee but so but I was like, No, we'll take it and we because well. I knew well, I knew that if we got it branded and um, ground, grounded down and safely and legally, we'd be able to sell that. So there was about a ton, a ton worth of coffee for free, and we've worked out if we sell it at three pounds a bag, that has the potential to be thirteen thousand pounds. Wow! It's called black you know, gold for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rather than, rather than just take the coffee and run, the individual that donated us says, I need to know what your charity, what your charitable cause is. You know, if you were to donate to somebody, who would it be? Because I know that this coffee is worth money. It's too late because you've given me it. You've agreed. I <laughs> said, but, <laughs> but what I would like to do is invest it in a cause that's close to your heart. And which is what we did. So, and that's what we're doing. And yeah, the, this, this, the, sell, the selling of it is restricted because of COVID, but people are buying it, you know, and so it, it, it's, it's all good. You know, if we can help one another, I could never morally have just taken that coffee, not said anything and turned that into money for Shield. To me, that would have been selfish. Um, so, but, but, but I think a lot of people would have been like, I can't do anything with a ton of, of coffee beans. That's not for me. But, but yeah. you were like, oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll do it. I think that, yeah. that's... That, that's <laughs> That's what's quite refreshing about this. It's like, yeah, I think I'll be one on the artist. I'm just thinking. She'll think differently, and it doesn't mean that we're thinking the right way. Just because somebody else wouldn't have had that that thought doesn't make them wrong. You know, there other other people have different ideas that I would never be able to think up, and I'm and I would be wow that that was really you know I think it's to be celebrated to be different. And I think because Definitely. we are in limited resources, we have to. We have to yeah. think of ways. We have to devise um, different methods of generating money into the group. So that's, I, I like that story. I think that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> I'm, I'm, really? so, I'm, so, I'm so getting like uh, loads of uh, specialty ground coffee from like... Well, the, trust the me, we box. weren't enjoying it when we were having mm -hmm. to pick up the boxes. Uh, <laughs> it was not fun. And, you know, we don't even have equipment to lift things. We don't have trolleys. We don't have hoists and, you know, things on wheels. It is all manual labour. And no, at the time, I'm not going to lie, I was cursing myself for agreeing to it because it was, it was not fun. <laughs> Okay, I'll, 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 I'll not do the call outs. <laughs> Lifting equipment and large yeah. scale coffee logistics. Uh, e expect an email off Elric for some coffee tonight. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> that, sounds, welcome, that, that sounds really good. You're welcome to but but it's, this, this, this sounds like a, a, a good time to, to talk about it as well. It's like, what, what? I mean, it sounds like you, you, you must have had like hundreds of adventures getting things. Uh, together or, or initiatives or developing things over here, but would you mind telling us from some highlights of a, le of a year, things that are like, I'll always remember this, that kind of thing, because you're, you're the only person that we have it twice on, on the podcast, so if you think about it, uh, what, what really sticks out? Okay, this is like, wow. <laughs> the biggest highlight for me and our, our first major achievement when I realised that um, going with my gut and showing a bit of passion a bit of grit was the right thing because sometimes you can get a bit scared or feel like you're making an idiot of yourself was when we secured the fair share contract mm -hmm. because at that time um fair share i think i was the only group in the whole of the, the uk that had a contract with fair share that wasn't a formal organization i was at my house you know i was in my home mm -hmm. i had a garage 
And to be able to secure that contract was quite a big achievement. And it was on the strength of, my argument was, you know, these OAPs, yeah, I, I get that they're shielding boxes and I think they're invaluable, but OAPs didn't, as, as I've explained before, they didn't have the fine motor skills to maybe even pick the box up off their doorstep. You know, they were big, they were heavy, they were, you know, and or they maybe didn't know how to cook because their wives used to cook for them and it wasn't convenient. So I got quite passionate about that with the gentleman, the manager from Fairshare and, you know, to secure that was quite a bold, I was very, you know, proud of myself and then obviously getting the space um, into the church, that was always a huge highlight and that was, what an adventure because I got to meet so many people, more volunteers, the volunteers got to connect with a, a um, religious organisation that we maybe ordinarily never would and we learnt, learnt so much um, about their faith, about their morals, um, about how they operate. Um, and, you know, I've got some lifelong friends there that I know that if, if there's ever a time in my life, whilst I'm not um, of any particular religion, there's aspects of, of them that um, I highly value and respect. And it's the same with the mosque, you know, being able to cook in the mosque. I mean, that, that's an honour. That's another boundary that... Um, communities have been able to, to come together where ordinarily there may be people might have thought that you know would never have you know well it's quite rare to say that you've cooked in a mosque in a traditional mosque style kitchen so yeah most kitchens then, yeah, yeah it's, i mean it's challenging ask angela um, <laughs> um, but, oh, and you know i've built up an excellent relationship with some of the members from the mosque and they're all very inspiring people um and then again, securing the, the, the college, the building, that was a huge, like I actually cried, you know, um, it was to secure that and know that it was going to help so many people and the, the potential of, you know, what goodness it can bring to the community. Um, but I mean, Christmas was a huge achievement, like mm -hmm. to then have the Dunfermline Press who have never sort of um, supported any community Christmas scheme to then come forward and say, right, well, we, we want to support you. And they, they developed bags for in the, in the Dunferland Press for people to donate. They promoted um, the work that we were doing. I mean, I mean that was an honour. I mean, for the Dunferland Press to invest in a small, although we're small and got big impact, um, there was a lot of trust put there and mm -hmm. we smashed it, we achieved it. Um, so that was lovely. And this year, I know the highlight definitely is going to be um, our food waste charity and the cafe and what I like about the food waste charity is um, I deliberately want this food waste charity to be about um, educating yourself a bit better and because we don't and hands up again in shield style because we don't actually understand when I mean, we have a, a grasp and we have the passion and we are passionate about food waste but because, again, it's something we've had to research as we've gone, it's almost like people are learning with us, which mm -hmm. makes it more user friendly rather yeah. than going in there with the jargon and the figures and the, you know, all, all this information. Sometimes slow and steady is the best approach. And if we're, dis if we're displaying that we're learning as we go as well, more people engage because you're not overloading them and spamming them with relative information but when you're just learning out you know about food waste and trying to learn new habits i think it's going to be a more user-friendly approach which will then in time have a bigger impact yeah so we've been piloting different mm -hmm. concepts yeah we've been piloting different things to see what works and what doesn't and um, because food waste is not about affordability it's about food waste it's about the emissions, it's about the manufacturing, it's about the production, it's about the wages of the staff that have, you know, got your potatoes from the field to the bin. So that's what we really want to try. And so th I think those are, you know, me, I'm a bit of a motor mouth, but those are the ones that uh, the key. <laughs> it's a podcast. Key, it's a good yeah. thing for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to me, the best part of all of it has been the, the connection that, myself and the volunteers have all got there's a good i don't know i don't know what it is it's just can, anybody can, who's come into the group love it can, can you explain a bit more uh what the food waste charity then is about so so, so yeah. basically there's a lot about uh, understanding more about 
food waste, what's going on, what it's about. So and, what we've yeah. advised and what we want to do, well, I'll, I'll change that, what we will do, because I'm all about positive reinforcement and I'll manifest okay. it. We want to have a mobile unit um, so we don't have expensive overheads and we're not restricted on a geographic area. This is a national problem. It's a worldwide problem, but we can't tackle the world and we can't tackle it nationally, but we can tackle it locally. Mm -hmm. But we want to be able to take it out locally. We don't want to be stuck in... We could run it from here, but it, that's not what we want. We want to get down at the root cause of the problem, get out into the communities. So we would like a mobile unit and we... For site that the best approach is probably to start educating children a wee bit better about it and have a friendly approach. So we want to run programmes around schools and community groups with uh, young children and youths and we will encourage them to bring in one product of food waste in. We'll talk about that food waste uh, product, we'll say where it originated from, how it got here, the cost, um, where it would have ended up that type of thing and run a wee project talking about it so they know and then with those food waste items we want to take them out to our mobile van and while they are doing their school work or, or other tasks in the classroom we'll then cook up lunch with the food that they've provided and we'll then oh, present absolutely. them with, with, with the meal um, and they can either eat it in class or they can take it home and um, we'll set challenges for them to do at home just to just to engage and educate and um, yeah, connect. So it's small scale, it's not going to be huge. We, um, we want to grow with it, but we do feel that we are passionate about the education of it and mm -hmm. then run our other projects with our surplus pop-ups, you know, that, that type of thing. I was just going to ask about that. Is that going to be part of the yeah. food waste as well? Yeah. We'll always continue that. Um, the surplus pop-ups, um, it's amazing to see because there's so many different types of people that come to them. You have individuals that are just so genuine about food waste and so knowledgeable, and these are invaluable to the group because we're actually learning from them. Um, and I think that's what it's all about. And then you'll have the, the, the other individuals that they're maybe just a bit curious, you know, what's in the bag? You know, what, what is this all about? Um, and then obviously you have individuals where it's a complete and utter lifeline. But it's nice seeing um, so many different categories of, you know, individuals coming together um, for it. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, I've always lived by non-food waste anyway. Um, you know, to me, it makes sense. It's better for the environment. It's cost effective and um, you're not being as wasteful. But to some individuals, even, you know, you know, the thought of a, a carrot with a best before date, you know, which is absurd. But it's just about breaking the barriers up here. And I get why they're there. You know, um, unfortunately, we've been brought up in a society of um, putting dates on things. And I understand. I'm not saying that they should not have dates, but a best before, mm -hmm. um, we need to be re-educated a bit better on. But I mean... We have yeah. collected a lot just from Tesco since December, because that's when we secured the Fair Share Go contract with Tesco. And we only collect two nights a week from Tesco, but we collect seven nights a week from the co-op. And we've been doing the co-op since about July. But from Tesco, we've collected just under three tonnes of wow. food waste. And that's just two nights a week. So I'm going to ask the co-op for a cumulative amount that we've collected from them because everything's scanned. So they'd be able to tell us. Yeah. Uh, I would. I would reckon, like easily, easily twenty-five tons, if not more. And that's, Easy. And that's not a, a big area. This is you're talking like a, a very specific area of work where you're working in, and you, you're not like thinking about the whole of five, obviously the whole of Scotland. <laughs> But you've crazy, just expanded it? to Kikori, haven't you, for your pop-up? Yes, we've moved the pop-ups through there because we do have service users through there. Um, we, we go to Kirkcaldy weekly anyway with our um, weekly bags. Um, and Kirkcaldy, um, to me, is... I don't think it's fair. If we're taking bags there, it's not fair. I mean, this is free food. This can go anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bit of an extra drive. It's costing us a wee bit more on fuel. Um, but nobody should not have access to free food. And if they're mm -hmm. passionate about food waste, you know, they're, they're also going to be 
um, passionate about the carbon footprint, and I don't think it's fair expecting them to drive through to Dunfermline for it for a few bags. Right. We can, well, yeah. You know, it, it, it just then, you know, you need to balance it up. So, um, Kirkcaldy, and it's it's it's, it's it's going well, isn't it, Emma? Yeah. Kirkcaldy. Mm -hmm. It's always it's, it's picking up. It's always getting booked out, but we deliberately keep the slots quite small. Um, because then if we send bags and you know people maybe don't book in that's still food waste we want to make sure everything's used and the only things we can't use are yogurts coleslaw mm -hmm. dairy products because of the use by date but even items that have got used by we are giving them and um, we, we leave a box for pets for them to come get for their rabbits or guinea pigs um, we donate um, the used by leafy greens to a, um, a rabbit charity that's, that rescue rabbits. They go to Pinkreath Park to feed the peacocks. Um, and we've got a chicken farm that we donate the leafy um, and, and any sort of bread that's surplus. Um, and we get an exchange for free eggs for the group. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, can and so how does it work? Uh, because mostly we work with groups that are not necessarily always in the know. They, they, they've got barriers of you know uh, uh, limitation in access, access, or we got uh, communications uh, barriers, different languages, or all kinds of barriers to actually participate or know about uh, things like that. So how does it work? Do, um, how would they find out? Uh, what's the to sort of what, to, to, think it? It, what to, to access it well we try and put as much on social media as possible and um, we have a surplus food waste group that's designated so we're not spamming the shield page too often mm -hmm. how many members are in the surplus food waste group yeah, we've got about 700 nod in our um, private surplus group so we would post more food waste relevant stuff on on there um, and people interact, they're, they're sharing their recipes, they're, they're saying what they did with their, their products that day and they're, they're sharing ideas. Um, we, um, Facebook is our main source of people knowing about us. Okay. Um, we probably could advertise it a bit more and push it more, but we also understand that we are running on, a, whilst we've got 40 volunteers, it's still us three that are having to pack these surplus bags. We are in here seven days a week packing the surplus bags for the pop-ups, disposing of the dairy items that we can't put out. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to take on too much because we're already doing about 50 jobs each. Yep. But once COVID lifts and we can introduce more people into the building, it will gift us the time that we can then commit to pushing it a wee bit more. Um, but it's all divine timing. Um, but word of mouth spreads. These pop-ups, you'll be surprised how many people then phone say, my friend got this bag, um, how do I go about doing it? And then we just WhatsApp them the link or we private message them the link. So word of mouth as well is word a huge... Mouth, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's because we we know, I mean, on our side, we, we know how many, as you say, some OAPs have been fallen out of a the, the big radar it's like there's, there's assumptions that they can communicate and and they can mm -hmm. they can cope with their food parcels or what they, they follow facebook some of them do some of them are super active on it but not everyone yeah. does <laughs> not everyone's like their, that. their loved ones do refer them though like for yeah. example we do food fairies uh, and food fairies every night go to doorsteps with some surplus stuff from the co-op so these are these households know that every night there's going to be food left on their doorstep you know usually between nine, half nine, with no doorbells are rung. It's very non-invasive. And then they just collect it off their doorstep and take it in. Some of them like to talk, some of them don't. And mm -hmm. then we've got um, other family members that have maybe put their OAP mother forward or their grand forward. And we would take surplus to them um, every sort of two to three days. Emma's got one. You've got a new favourite, haven't you, in yeah. Crossgates. Um, so, it's like yeah. extended families in some ways. <laughs> yeah. No, it's nice and you know, it's, it's great. You get to know their wee characters and, you know, and they're like, I can't believe this would have just gone in the bin, you know, and, and it's nice hearing that because we know that we've saved it and it's put a smile on their face. And because it, it's such a variation of products that we get with no guarantee of what's coming in day to day, I know it sounds really basic, but it genuinely gives these people something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives them a bit of variety and, you know, 
I like how you call them food fairies. <laughs> Brilliant. I think that's a good name. <laughs> yeah, the food fairies. So, um, and no, and that's a lifeline to a lot of families too. Because, listen, if we could um, support everybody for free, we would do it, but we, we can't. You know, our subscriptions are really, really low, but we understand mm -hmm. that some people can't afford £7.50 a week. You know, so this food fairy is, it's, it's great that we can, we're so lucky that we've got the volunteers and the flexibility and the resources to be able to offer that. It's a boost that a lot of people will definitely find it a lifeline to, to come out of, well, I don't know when we're, we're completely coming out of this. Uh, seems like it's still dragging on and dragging on. Actually, to, to, today was what was it? Uh, the National Day of Remembrance, the, the one year yeah. of reflection. So obviously the podcast won't, won't, won't come out on today, but it's not mm. too far from it. But, no. uh, but it's it's but it's also why we wanted to talk to you as, as a way of seeing what your perspective of has it been the past year, uh, where it's where it has you have got to now as well. And it sounds like. Uh, to be honest, you, you've gone from strength to strength since September, and you're developing in uh, the ways that's going to make you one of the they call community anchor organizations that you keep things together for, for more than one group and across different groups. And even, uh, you know, sorry to interrupt, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Even, even when COVID, if it dies down, COVID's always going to be there as a threat. You know, it could mutate. And even if it doesn't, and we all get inoculated and life goes back to some kind of different normality. Shield has highlighted to me that there's always going to be some kind of vulnerable category or categories that are going to need help. And one benefit that Shield has is we will adapt to that. It, you know, everything's COVID related at the moment, but our skill sets and our passion and our belief of helping one another, that doesn't depend on COVID. That's always there. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's irrelevant whether COVID's here or not. If, if, if there's, as long as there's a community, SHIELD will be here because there's always going to be people in that community that need something. And because we're so flexible and diverse, we'll be able to fill that need. I mean, I've openly had conversations with organisations within Fife that have said to me that um, the work in poverty is not on their radar. Or mm -hmm. um, are you, what qualifies you to do what you're doing? Um, or, um, you know, there's other community groups out there like yourself that were set up on COVID and once this goes, they'll go. And my answer to that is, well, that's your opinion. You know, we're here and we're, we're, I do believe that this is only just the beginning and I don't see me involved with SHIELD forever. I don't mm -hmm. see me um, doing this for, you know, the rest of my life, but I do see me passing it on to somebody that's got equal passion and vision and moral compass that can do an even bloody better job than me. You know, I'm horrendous organization. I can't, oh. my, no, like, honestly, like the, the girls will tell you, my notes are always a mess. I, I'm not good, I've got numb fingers, so I find it hard doing small motor skills. Um, I store everything up here and they'll tell <laughs> me everything's up here. Um, so, Shield probably could be run by somebody with better skill sets, but whether or not they've got the same passions and the same, you know, we're all different. But I do hope to one day that I can walk away from Shield and be so immensely proud of of everything and leave maybe a wee bit of a legacy. And you know, <laughs> we, are, that, we are that's already in place, bro. <laughs> <There's> already <laughs> so many <things. laughs> like, we are a bit, we are a bit different. We are a bit wild. We are a bit, um, you know, a bit, bit rusty. No, nothing is ever done perfectly, but it's done with a perfect amount of passion and dedication. You, I would be confident to say you'll not find a more dedicated group in Scotland. Never mind Fife. You know, there's no self gain here. Um, that's a huge, you know, it's a, it's a huge dedication. It's, it speaks a lot of volumes about the type of people that we do. Do have involved do and are all age groups all age groups all religion you know all ethnicities it's 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 beautiful we're, we're really lucky but all it's something that does come across it's amazing uh from the work you do and lisa has been a 
a faithful fan on social media all the time going like, oh, by the way, look what's going on. And she'll, <laughs> look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm doing this now. <laughs> I've, I've deliberately tried to come away from the social media. Um, I don't want it to be known as the Sarah Show. I don't want it to be known as Sarah Keeble Shield. I want it to be known as, as Shield. Um, you know, that this, that it's all, one thing, it's, it's not a negative and it has been a, a bonus to the group because I am quite good at um, engaging. I'm, I'm, I can, you know, I can talk for Scotland and I'm passionate. That's worked in Shield's favour, but there's so many passionate people in this group too. And mm -hmm. I want them to have an identity and a, a place within within the group. Um, so I sometimes try and come away a wee bit and not be like, I don't do as many lives. Um, and, and I kind of want my privacy back as well sometimes. It's, it's quite invasive. It can be very, yeah. you know, there's negatives to it as well. There's, you know, which I never talk about on Shield, but there are, there's a lot of negatives, a lot of messages that maybe I would highly deem inappropriate or, um, you know, individuals that would maybe criticise or, but I, we don't focus on them. We, we focus on all, all the good things. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem with, trying to share a message, there's always going yeah. to be mm -hmm. opposite flow and well actually it's, it's a bad place to talk about it on a podcast, but anyway, never mind. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, we fully understand. But 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 it's also I think you're talking something really right there. It, it, it's about getting uh, a group of people involved. So so it's not just stress on you. It's a, you, you don't you don't want to burn out. You want to actually have a group of folk, you know, and then it becomes yeah. more uh, distributed the work is more distributed than one person really stressing and all that yeah. that's so and, it, and it's true because we've got clothing connections too which is run by nikki wild and everybody knows nikki for the clothing side of things and i'm very self-aware of she'll get similar pressures and expectations probably not on as much of a grand scale as as i do because our projects are bigger and the clothing part is restricted because to do with space and storage but that's going to change you know um we are, we're developing an app for the clothing connections and you know nikki is more than capable of being able to although i'll always guide her and i'll help her and, and we work together um i wanted to make allow nikki to have a project that really she could make her own baby because she's passionate about the, the clothing side of stuff um and it, again it, it's been good for her to just to, to, I want everyone to feel that they have an ownership within Shield. You know, Makes sense. Mm -hmm. none of us have a particular role. You know, there's no managers. There's there's no. We all just we all pick up if somebody you know doesn't want to do something one day. We just pick up, and there's no fallout. There's no. It's 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 a, it's very unique. It's a unique workplace, shall I say? It's it's rare. I've never had it in a workplace. I've not I've not even had it in a friend group. But for some reason, what we've got is, and long may it last. It's amazing. The, but the thing that uh, we we try and, and find out as well at this time when the podcast is like, okay, this is where you got to. Now, if you look ahead, what's your big wish that has to happen? <laughs> that's the next big thing that's like, uh, so for some folk, I think, I think uh, last time when we talked about it, uh, Lisa was wanting to have some time off homeschooling. I think your wish has come true, Lisa. No. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll have to wait and see if um, they say 12th of April they can go back to school. Ah, so it's have. not true yet. So it's not true yet. It's, it might be true. It might come yeah, true. Yeah, it might come true. So if you do see me, I might be a wee bit happy <laughs> <laughs> i'll be on the champagne <laughs> ah, celebrating but, but in your case uh, what, what's the one wish you would say for for this year ish but uh, yeah for this year for shield for yourself what's the thing um, it's like the next thing I, really we don't make any plans in shield whatsoever and that probably sounds like a complete and utter big massive farcical lie but I think that's why we succeed, because if we had too many goals and if we didn't achieve them or if we had, mm -hmm. um, it would almost restrict us um, or it might overwhelm us. 
so we have a belief system that if something's for the group, it comes to the group and then we make it happen. Um, okay. So obviously I've got the stereotypical things that I'd like to see it do. I want to see us generate money, not not because that that's selfish, but it means then we can do better and bigger work. Um, I want to be able to say to my volunteers, hey, you're not just getting diesel this week, you're getting your mileage. You know, just small things that really mean so much. So if I can get the group to a financial st stable position that we can do that, to me, I, I, we're achieving. And we are, we're achieving. But it means for, for me to be able to get the group to that level, I'll be delighted. And from a personal selfish point of view, what do I want? I'd like to have a weekend off. Uh, um, what it is. I want COVID to go away so we can introduce more volunteers into our, our bubble in here. Um, but I can't control that at the moment. So I just have to go on the peace of mind that when the time, when that time comes, I'll then enjoy having weekends. Oh, that sounds good. Just basic so, things, nothing, nothing so, huge. Sounds pretty good. A good weekend off, that sounds pretty right, I think. Yeah, I think you're <laughs> definitely <laughs> overdue on <laughs> a wee holiday. Bahamas, you know, nothing too major. A cruise. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to avoid cruises for a while. I don't know why. Yeah. I get the side <laughs> <laughs> I would like to get stuck on a cruise. No, 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 Everybody's no. like, oh, it's COVID again. <laughs> I know. I'm on my own. <laughs> Uh, that sounds really good, but yeah, it's 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 the reason why we're a bit reflective is because it's also the end of our podcast series, and uh, so it's one yeah. of these things. And um, one thing I I, I think uh, we so I look back on, oh, I go like, yeah, this has been great. Has been uh, how Lisa started as a volunteer and, and now is a professional podcaster. That's been brilliant, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, people that know me would know I would never do this kind of thing. I, you know, this is not my thing doing interviews like this and everything. Even standing up in front of probably a group of people and doing a t uh, presentation, I'm like, going, nah. <laughs> You've probably learned the aspects of you that had COVID not come into the equation. You would never have known these, you know, so you should be very proud yes. of yourself. It's not easy. Uh -huh. It's not easy. What I've liked about is uh, is getting to meet all the different community groups, you know, and discussing what they're about and how um, how they work to achieve to help the community. But also, I think more is what groups like yourself and other groups that I've met that have been created because of COVID, yeah. and everything and how you have started off and then just you are sort of like getting bigger and bigger and you know and seeing the achievements along the way that everybody's created yeah no it is, it's it's good and i hope there'll come a time that i'll be able to actually have more headspace to then actually look into the other community groups because i've never been able to because i've been that busy and see how we can complement one another and it's pointless um, mimicking or providing a, a mirrored service mm -hmm. you know because to me that's a waste of resources and um, which was why because I'm very passionate about Recyth Eats and when we got the opportunity of the building down in Recyth I was keen that it was not a similar project that they're running because they're expanding down there and mm -hmm. um, you know we want to support the work that they do so that's why OAPs to us was the the, it was the first choice anyway, it always was going to be that. Um, but it's important to be respectful and aware of what else is out there in the community because it's mm. pointless all doing the same thing. That's a waste of money, it's a waste of resources. And, you know, if we could then put money into a different area that needs taken care of, you know, you're having a bigger impact. Yeah, I, I mean, that's definitely why, why we do this podcast as well. So a lot of people can learn about what's going on and where their work fits in or can connect. Yeah. Like when you mentioned that, uh, um, my, my colleague uh, Pat and the team from the Minority Ethnic Order Project that we run, they, they, they are, there's a lot of people there that have been left out of the loop and they would love to have something to, to pop into. And actually, and yeah. I'll, I'll definitely go like, well, there you go. As soon as it's safe to do so, uh, yeah. that sounds like a, a destination for you, especially in that, in the Rosafe, uh, Rosafe. 
I'm, I'm a sponge. I love to learn. I I will look at I'll look at um, charities from a business mind. My mind my mind works differently, and it doesn't mean that I'm not charitable. It just means that I can think of ways of actually. Do you know what? You could double your money if you did this, or you know, if you don't, don't worry about not getting that funding. I've got an idea how you could expand on X, Y, Z, that type of thing. Um, just different minds, yeah. and they can complement one another. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, uh, I will put that on the map of places to visit as soon as you're allowed out in the, I don't know, April. When 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 are we hoping for April, June? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So that sounds really, uh, that, that sounds like, I don't know, um, it's been uh, a, bit, a bit of a odd uh, year to reflect on for our, our series, but I would say that it's been so good to have you as a guest twice. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't know uh, where, where uh, the podcast will go after this because it's officially the last one. So I, I just I would just like to just put it there really quickly to say it's been fantastic to have Lisa as a co-host. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, Despite you. your internet connection that dropped out a few times, right? people can see <laughs> that on it dropped down on mine as well. And um, but yeah, so it's been really, really good to, to have a series of podcasts and to have uh, Shilon uh, come twice to talk about how you developed into that. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. No, I enjoy it. This is good for me to because having people ask you questions the volunteers never do we will challenge our ideas but we'll never challenge what what you know it's nice to have somebody out with ask us and ask an opinion and you know so no it's good it's a good reflective i i, I enjoy it so thank you for having me no oh, it's been great it's been great to see how you've grown and everything so thank you for your support yeah. you're always very enthusiastic so and you know it, there's been times, you know, when you do doubt yourself, and then when you remember certain conversations that you've had or certain encouragements, that's, you know, they're they're invaluable. So thank you. Not a problem. Right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> very pleased. Thank you very very much. Uh, can I take a photo of us so I can share it onto social media about our wee chat today? Is that all right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hamish as well. He wants to say hi. Come here. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> he wishes being like our so uh, puppy. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, so cute. So oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. It right, I've got back to reality. Same. Okay, so thank you, Sarah, for coming along today in front of Bike Shield. Uh, thank you to all the groups and organisations that we've talked over the last few seasons. And that's so that's the end of Let's Keep Chatting. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you as well, Lisa. All the best. Bye. -bye.